So we're gonna meet this woman. She's been having abductions since she was the age of two. She's lived in Colorado her whole life. And I think that she's a good person to interview in our investigation, just to kind of figure out, you know, why they're coming here. Well, you know, if, if she's been experiencing this for quite some time, and it sounds like it's really impacted her, uh, sometimes those people tend to open up a little bit better to you. I mean, if you want to take the lead on this, and sure. it seems like it might be kind of an emotional thing for her as well. Yeah. Interview with Ella LeBain, 6.20 p.m. Ella LeBain says she's had terrifying encounters with extraterrestrials all her life. Let's start back when you were a child, because you told me that your first experience is when you were two. Yes, my parents used to tell the story over and over again as I was growing up. They used to find me uh, upside down in my crib with nosebleeds, and the sheets were all full of blood. That's really scary for new parents to see their child upside down and blood everywhere. Did they bring you to the hospital? Yes. I had this little nodule in my right nostril that was like a BB. It was almost like an implant. The nosebleeds eventually stopped. The terror did not. Moving forward, I remember, I think around the ages of five and six, I would see these beings in my room. I used to make my father check under the bed <laughs> and the closet before they put me to sleep every night. And, and I would wake up often with sleep paralysis. Those are, you know, memories that I, I just, I would never forget. It went on for decades. Can you take us back and explain what the beans look like? Well, um, he had round eyes and was kind of grayish white, humanoid. They were the classic almond-shaped grays. Many abductees will describe the gray as drones as if they were a bee colony and that they're workers. They could care less about your emotional state after the pact. Ella's encounters with the Greys took a chilling turn when she was in her 30s and trying to start a family. I was having a lot of miscarriages. We went to the doctor to get tested and we both were fine, you know? They said, oh, you're perfectly capable of, of having children. This has gotta be hard to talk about. I was, I was bawling my eyes out, like, what's going on? Why am I having these miscarriages? Despite her repeated trips to various doctors, Ella could not figure out the reason for her miscarriages until one terrifying night. I was in a lot of pain. You know, and I fell asleep. That's when I woke up to a gray being at the end of my bed. And I felt really kind of like crampy and like I had a stomach ache. And he took my hand. What what happens next? Well, I don't, I mean, it's not like, oh, it was like an ordered thing. I have pieces of it. What do you remember? I remember being in the ship and looking down at the earth. It was very clinical, like a lab, except there were bassinets. It was a nursery. But whatever was inside those bassinets wasn't entirely human. With creeping terror, Ella realized she was surrounded by alien human hybrid infants and that they had come from her own womb. I started realizing that I was being used as an incubator. Wow, that's, 
that is, um, that is, that's a lot to take in. I mean, <clears throat> so basically you're, you're saying that they had tagged you from a very young age, that they were going to use you as an incubator, and then you help them create these hybrids. Well, I, I don't know if I helped them consciously, okay, but, and I certainly don't remember agreeing to it. I um, want to make that clear. Mm -hmm. But yes, they did use me um, the, to incubate. So why do you think they brought you back to the ship? Because they're part human, as well as part alien, they need the human touch in order to thrive and to grow. And that was the purpose of those abductions, was to be taken into the nursery and hold them and nurture them. Ella realized she'd been on this ship before, caring for babies that had been stolen from her own body. But finally, she understood why she had struggled to get pregnant for years. And when she awoke back in her bed, something terrible happened that confirmed her worst fears. I went to the bathroom and I passed this entire placenta. And I didn't know, I didn't know it was a placenta because I never saw that before in my life. So I was like, oh my God, what just came out of me? And I got a little panicky and I went and called my husband and he took me to the hospital and they checked me and analyzed everything and said I had just had a miscarriage and it was between eight and 10 weeks. And they said it was really unusual because everything was intact and the only thing that was missing was the fetus. And what do you think happened to the fetus? So the gray alien that showed up at the edge of my bed when I miscarried that night, I believe he came to get the fetus. It's about this hybridization program that the greys have been facilitating. Why would gray aliens harvest hybrid babies from humans? Is it possible they're building an army to lead an invasion? How does that make you feel? You're basically saying I've been kind of tagged, monitored, and then used. I felt like a victim. I don't ever remember giving permission, calling it in, asking for it. Would you agree then that at least in the context, the greys seem to be deceivers? They're creating, like you said, you're, you felt terror. Yes, uh, they use some type of technology to do the sleep paralysis. It feels like you're under a spell beyond our control. And I think that it, that's why it's called an abduction, because it's like a kidnapping. <laughs>